Chapter 15 We stepped up onto the front stoop and peered through the glass storm door. A big orange cat, probably Garfield, just kidding, with bright blue eyes stared back at us from the other side of the door. I rang the doorbell. A few seconds later, a smiling young woman in jeans and a yellow turtleneck came hurrying to the door. She carried a basket of Snicker bars and Milky Ways. You all look great, she declared, dropping a candy bar in each bag. Drew, hold up your bag, Ted ordered shrilly. Oh, sorry. I was still worrying about Shane and Shana. I hold up my bag for the woman. The cat narrowed its amazing blue eyes at me. Are you supposed to be a princess? The woman asked Tabby. No, a ballerina, Tabby replied. And you're a lump of coal, the woman asked Walker. Something like that, Walker muttered. He didn't do a dark and stormy night routine. I guess he was worried about Shane and Shana too. Have fun, the woman said. She pulled the short, excuse me, she pulled the storm door shut. Storm doors, what the hell? But anyway. The four of us jumped off our stoop and started across the frost-covered grass to the next yard. When I glanced back to the door, I saw the cat still staring out at us. The next house was dark, so we crossed the lawn to the house next door to it. A group of kids was already on the front stoop, shouting, Trick or treat! Trick or treat! Where are they? I whispered to Walker. He shrugged. If they don't show up, I started. But I saw Tabby watching me, so I didn't finish my sentence. We waited for the kids to leave, then climbed up to the stoop. Two little kids, probably three or four years old, were handing out little bags of candy corn to everyone. They laughed at Lee's bee costume. They wanted to fill the antennas. The little boy asked Lee where the stinger was. I stuck into someone, Lee told him. They stared hard at Walker's all-black outfit. I think it kind of frightened them. Are you supposed to be a monster? The little girl asked Walker timidly. No, I'm a lump of coal, Walker told her. Now you gotta go to the lump of coal thing. <laughs> Dude, give it up. She nodded seriously. We hurried away and did three more houses to the end of the block. I saw two kids that I babysit for. They were imagining robot costumes. I saw the talk with them for a minute. Then I had to run to catch up to the others. They had crossed the street and had started doing the house on the other side. A strong gust of wind fluttered my cape. I shivered and glanced nervously at my watch again. Where were they? Where were she and Shana? The whole plan depended on them. Wow, pretty good home so far, Lee declared. He held his bag open, setting the contest as we crossed the street. Did you get any Kit Kats? Tabby demanded. I tried to aim with the Kit Kats. Only one person gave out apples, Lee said, making a disgusted face. He reached into his bag and pulled out the apple. Then he heaved it as hard as he could across the yard. The apple hit a tree trunk with a loud thunk. Then it bounced into the next driveway. Why do people give out apples? Lee grumbled. Don't they know we only want candy? Some people are just cheap, Tabby said. She pulled out her apple and dropped it in the grass, and she kicked it with the toe of her ballet slipper. They both really deserve what they're going to get, I thought. They're both really jerks. But where is Shane and Shana? We trick or treat our way down the block. It was getting pretty late, and there were fewer little kids out. The street light near the corner was broken. We stepped into the patch of deep shadow. One of Lee's attendants kept slipping off. He slid it back on excuse me. He slid it back into place for the tenth time. As we neared the corner, a tall tree blocked the moonlight and it grew even darker. Oh, I let out a cry as two figures leaped out at us from behind the tree. I thought that Todd and Joe had returned, but I quickly saw that it wasn't those guys. In a gray blur, the two figures turned their backs on us, walking away. They wore dark robes that flowed straight down to the ground, and over their heads, over their heads, they wore pumpkins! Large, round pumpkins, perfectly balanced on their shoulders. Whoa! Walker let out a startled cry. He backed up and stumbled into me. Tabby and Lee gaped in surprise, but the most horrifying surprise was yet to come. As they slowly turned to face us, their jack and lantern faces came into view. Eerie, jagged glands cut into their pumpkin heads, flashing triangle eyes, lit by flames. Bright orange yellow flames danced inside their heads. As pumpkin heads turned their fiery, ragged grins on us, Walker and I opened our mouths 
and screamed in terror. Now we're getting good, guys. Stay tuned next week for more Attack of the Jackal Lanterns. Until next time, guys. TGIF. Peace out and love you.